it's it's pretty cool. I you know the best part is just like you go into the office or you're on the elevator, everyone's happy. The entire city is happy. And I've always known that about sports. It's a unifying effect. It makes everyone feel good. Um, and it's just fun to watch. You're happy. You're happy for the players, but you really do a time flash. You go back to like day one. Like I, I think about Randy lighting my cigar when we sold enough tickets to qualify. I think about, you know, beating the Chicago Bulls in the first year. I think about Vince's shot or his slam dunk. You just think about all these things and now you're in the moment. I think what is important about this is every generation kind of in the city has had their moments. My dad used to talk about the Leafs winning back-to-back -back Stanley Cups and I had no idea what he was talking about because I wasn't even seven years old. Um, the Blue Jays back-to-back -back World Series was my generation's moment. Um, this finals run is our kids moment and all those tens of thousands of kids that were out on the streets Saturday night with no arrests just celebrating having fun it's great for them to be able to have their moment well you had one group with Magic Johnson and Harold Ballard's family who used to own the Maple Leafs you had the other group with Labatt's and um, and Larry Tannenbaum and they were both formidable but uh, you know what a lot of people forget is I, I was involved in bringing the 1994 World Championships to Toronto. I had a working relationship with the NBA. Um, I think I had a lot of trust from the league that, you know, what I, what, I, what I convinced them is however you do basketball in this country, it's got to be different. You can't follow the hockey model. You can't, it, you just, you, everything has to be different in terms of what it is you're doing. So the name was very unique. We were targeting um, women kids and new Canadians. We were like, let the old white guys follow hockey, but we're gonna get the next generation. And I think that's what you're seeing now. There's a reason why we were, you know, top three in license sales in our expansion year. It was the name and the logo. Um, you also pick something that could be global in its application. You know, you could be in Zurich or Sydney and a Raptor t-shirt is, would be something unique and cool, um, as opposed to a grizzly or beaver. Um, so with just everything we did, we were always trying to think of the implications, how it would stand out and how different it would be. There was a commitment to build a new arena. We were the only original six team in from the NHL, you know, pre-expansion days that didn't have a new arena that was being contemplated. Um, we had to build a team, had to hire management. Uh, luckily, I brought in Isaiah, who really set up a really unique tone within the league amongst the players that this is going to be a scrappy, hardworking uh, club. And that was there from day one. And even in our bad times, people still kind of remembered that. And now with, you know, Kawhi and Kyle, um, everyone knows that, you know, like uh, being a Raptor is becoming a meaning in the NBA. And, and, and that was always there from day one. Uh, you know, this was not a slam dunk in the early days. I, I think, uh, 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 you know, a lot of people didn't think we'd be here today. Jay Cross, who worked with uh, worked for us back in the day, who's now he's doing the Hudson Yards project in New York. He was in, in charge of getting the arena done for us, and uh, he came into my office one day and he said, "You know, we can buy the old post office uh, delivery building." And uh, right now, I go, "Is that the one next to Union Station?" And he and he goes, "Yeah." And I go, "Oh my God, that is like the ultimate answer." Uh, you know, it's a life stream, but I knew that the Leafs and Raptors needed to be in one building and the Leafs wanted to control the destiny of that building. And so, you know, it, it, the smart thing to do was, was to take a step back and, and let it move on. And I don't think you would have the success of the Raptors today to the same degree uh, as they do sharing the building with the Maple Leafs. And I think the biggest thing, the biggest thing out of all this is just how successful basketball is in Canada overall. We've got more kids in the NCAA than ever before. We've got more NBA players in the NBA than ever before. We've got a national team. We've got the World Championships coming up in the fall. We're one of the you know, four favored teams. Um, that's where I really uh, you know, get proud of what we've accomplished. I, I think I've, I've told the story a few times. I went to my old neighborhood. When I was a kid, we had the only basketball hoop. My brothers and I had the only basketball hoop um, in our neighborhood. Today, when I go to the neighborhood, every driveway has a net. And it's just that makes you beam with happiness. Toronto is a hotbed of basketball talent. 
uh, all the scouts, all the recruiters, everyone comes up here. We got teams competing, you know, in, in the best U.S. divisions in, term, in, in, their, um, in their amateur leagues. Uh, and we're winning and we're sending kids nonstop to some of the best schools because of what the Raptors did here. The whole country is getting in on it and that's the other part by being the only team it doesn't matter whether you're in you know Victoria or Newfoundland you're you're watching the Raptors and the ratings are proof of it and it's kind of funny that here we are June and we're talking basketball and we're not talking, you know, our national pastime hockey, which is pretty exciting.